How's everyone going? Welcome back to another coming tonight. A MTMR railway unboxing video. Um, this is actually the third video I'm filming today, so it's just kind of getting boring saying that now, but whatever. Um, you already seen the title, uh, so you know you should know what this is, but time for, some, uh, for, time for another steam locomotive. Alright, so as a bit of a continuation to when we acquired the C62, um, still yet to get carriages or that though, uh, we have, I've now acquired a um, D51, uh, which is a more, well, one of the more popular locomotives uh, in the JNR fleet. There were around a thousand of these built, but we'll go through that in the, um, in the brief history in the video. In any case, um, so yeah, so we've got uh, basically another same style plastic casing box which is nice um, yeah obviously bubble wrapped on the front it's um, code uh, some cardo again uh, code number 2016A number 498, uh, 498 this is actually the JR East preserved version um, and yes I said JR East I've mistakenly bought a JR East uh, locomotive and in fact mistakenly bought JR East carriages that is the class 12 carriages that this runs with. So, well, I have a set of tra uh, a set which ran on JREs running with um, JR West trains now. There we go. In any case, um, that's uh, too much of a problem. Uh, we'll, we will have this running with the carriages in, in this video because why not? Well, I have the carriages for it. Uh, obviously, we're not doing the unboxing of those carriages in this video, though. That's part of the extras video. In any case, let's have a quick look around the box. So we've seen uh, we've got the product numbers on the side, got um, uh, side sheeting, and you've got a nice little blueprint sort of um, uh, sketch of the uh, locomotive uh, and your information and your uh, obviously that and made in Japan, which is nice. So. Nothing like our Australian stuff. So let's uh, quickly get into it. it. Shouldn't take too long with this sort of stuff. Um, these are supposed to be unboxing videos. They're not supposed to be the reviews, which are supposed to be long. In any case, um, just have to sort out getting this out first. Removing the top shell, you I can remove this little piece of plastic. Uh, so bubble wrap. Um, there's your D51. So I didn't realise we weren't in the centre of the frame, but uh, it's snazzy. And the thing about this one, it also has no number plates. Uh, <laughs> You got any number plates right here? Um, you can e you have either the they should all be the same number though. Yep, all the same number. You can either pick the black number plates or the red number plates. Up to you. I'm pretty sure the reds were JR National styled, and the blacks were when it eventually became JR East. I'm not sure on that though. I will confirm that later on, or you can comment that below. Uh, and there's more things in there. What is these? Um, Oh, the front, um, I, I have to go and find what this looks like in real life, but the, the, the basically sits on the front of the locomotive, uh, which is kind of, which is pretty nice. So, I don't know why I'm putting those back in, I have to take these out, I have to pull the whole box apart. So let's get the engine out, shall we? Again, like the C62, it's a whole foam tray sort of thing that can come out. Um, and there's your engine right there, so quick, quickly bring her out. She's also, so there we go. There's your little C60, uh, C, uh, not C62, D51. Um, I need to find out what this wheel alignment's called as well, because it's a um, 282 wheel alignment, like our, actually, it's like our N classes in the Victorian Railway's N class locomotives. Uh, so I can't remember off the top of my head what kind of wheel classification that is. And we got our little. I suppose basic instruction manuals for there we go for it fitting of the front part of the thing. Funnily enough, the um, carriages actually come with one as well. Uh, fitting your number plates to the engine and tender. Uh, fitting of detail part. Don't know what that is. Um, and your spare parts so you can acquire from Mercado uh, themselves, of course, which is pretty nice. Good to have um, be able to have access to those spare parts. Uh, each company, each to their own on how they do spare parts. I, ha I have to admit, um, some of our companies uh, you have to buy them as well, but some other companies you just uh, 
what's called perch, uh, you get the, you can just request for them because, uh, and they will give them to you for free. So it's all interesting the way that they do it sometimes. So in any case, um, yeah, let's get up nice and close to her. It's she really is small once again, and uh, we'll take a, uh, take a look at the D fifty one. All right. Well, we have um, the D fifty one currently in front of us, nice and close up. Again. Wow, um, working with HO and working with Engage, it's so different, <laughs> so miniature. Um, in any case, we'll just quickly jump into a bit of brief history on the class, and then we'll have a look at close up and some of these. The D51 class is a type of freight steam locomotive built for the Japanese government railways that were introduced in 1936. The D51s would end up being built by several companies, namely the Japanese Government Railways, Jap uh, Jap Japanese National Railways, Kawasaki Heri Industries, Kisha Shinjika, Hitachi, Nippon Sharo, and Mitsubishi. Manufacturing of the class continued until 1951, with 1,115 1 units constructed for use in Japan, the largest of any class. The D-51s have a 282 wheel arrangement and operate it on Japan's 3 foot 6 inch railways. They have a top speed of 85 kilometers an hour. Despite being uh, having a freight design though, they were very optimal for use on all types of workloads. So they could be seen carrying out all sorts of tasks and operating all over the Japanese National Rail Network. The locomotives operated until 1975 with dieselization and electrification taking over, and JNR Hokkaido having the last of the D-51s in operation. Upon retirement, 174 were set aside for preservation. Five are in operation condition, with the rest being preserved in static condition, or for a source for spares. All right, so some of it's, um, we've now combined the features and close up because oh, just why are we looking at the models so, for so long on the desk we need to speed this things up but anyways let's, let's give the um thing a nice spin around so we can have a look all around so you got your compressor on this side as well fit it with one of the standard style couplers There we go. All right, let's put the camera in a bit closer so we can actually have a look at some key things or key things I can see through the lens anyways. So again, as we have, I should already know, here's a 282 um, locomotive. Uh, and as per the history, um, you'll know that um, of a thousand of these were built, so they're definitely a, um, uh, a very prominent locomotive in the JNR fleet. Fitting onto the front, let's have a look at the front profile of the engine. Uh, for, obviously, you've got the hole in the front for the number plate. Uh, that will be sorted at some point whenever I can be bothered because I have to do the C62 as well. Um, spinning down, you have a fake coupler on the front. I'm pretty sure it's fake anyway. I don't think it works, but it's probably you don't want that massive couple on the front anyways it looks nicer with this little one uh, got some nice painted details on the front um, especially on the door you got two you, this has got uh, this is the version with the auxiliary headlight basically um, so that in case that was uh, the headlight was to fail they have a second headlight that allows them to continue to op uh, continue the operation um, bit different to how we do it uh, the way we do it is uh, we have dual lights usually fitted uh, inside the um, headlights and uh, especially for our diesels the steam engines uh, some of them had they had a daylight and a night light fitted so spinning along you can see we got a steps behind the deflectors very nice look, uh, deflectors I think the sizes are pretty nice you got your pistons on this side uh, you get even your little cow catcher on the front. Very nice linkage again. Uh, interesting that part of the linkage is plastic. Um, it's always something that uh, something kind of odd to me. You got nice little painted um, hand uh, piping down the side. You get your handrail that runs straight down the side of the boiler. You got your um, two safety valves fitted. And again, once again, we will get your compressor on this side. 
you've got the bottom side of the bo of the um, firebox uh, nicely rendered in a different colour, like as per like rusted sort of metal or whatever. Uh, you got a little printing on the side of the cab. Don't think the camera is going to be able to get this, so that's proven. It literally goes straight out of focus. I will try to um, get a close-up image of that at some point, probably with the DSLR instead, and then you will be able to read that or see what that is as I'll pop it on the screen now. All right, let's continue onwards. We got our tender. Uh, got a nice bit of coal on the top. Do we have anything in the cab? A nice pipe work for the injectors and stuff underneath the cab as well. Uh, anything in the cab? We can see the, there are stuff moulded in there. There is some stuff moulded in there. Not very easy to see it though. Let's bring the light down a bit and we can, might be able to angle it a bit a little. Unlike um, our, uh, uh, the larger models, the coupling is more permanent on these. So to remove them is going to be immensely difficult but got your single headlight at the back so it does allow you to go backwards no marker lights like our engines though this is kind of interesting I'm pretty sure those mark like the end of train those two red uh, red dots so yeah it's a very nice little look at you've got a proper rotating uh, proper rotating bogies on the tender and rotating um pony truck on the rear uh, supporting the cab now we're on to the other side, we've got another compressor on this side possibly uh, not 100% sure what that is actually, you got your whistle next to the dome I'm pretty sure there's another variant where the um, dome actually extends out to the, or the funnel and in case I get streamlining around, like, the, uh, around that which is kind of different so yeah and then Definitely looks like a nice little model. Um, can't wait to give this a run. Apologies, I can't really say too much about it. It's not like that. I'm a, obviously, I'm not. Uh, there's not many things that I can really look at and go, this is wrong or this is this. Most of the times, though, I've noticed that they've been pretty accurate, anyways, when it comes to uh, their models. Um, if anyone's realised as well, uh, for obvious reasons uh, and uh, uh, for obvious reasons, yes, this um, locomotive is also what Hero is based on in the t uh, Thomas and Friends series. So. Um, uh, that's probably why it's also such a prominent um, shape compared to most of the other um, uh, Japanese engines. But yeah, so there we go. That's um, D51 498. Uh, I guess the uh, only thing we can do now is bring her down to the layout and have a look at how she operates. And we'll even put her on her load of um, Class 12 carriages. So see you at the layout. There you go, we're now at the layout for, to have a look, let's give this D51 a run, shall we? Uh, it's just parked off to the side at the moment. So, here she is, it's, um, still has no numbers, I'm not going to put those on until you well later on. Uh, we'll make use of this railer, honestly, because it's a bit tedious with all so many wheels. Just pour it on. I don't recommend, fully recommend pulling it on like this, but it's, it's definitely still easier than trying to put it on by hand. All right. Um, I think I've got my controller set inverted, uh, in inverter mode at the moment. So this is technically reverse going forward, but we'll give a quick light test to have a look at and see her light. There she is. So she does have a working light. It looks like she's all on the track as well, the fact that she's moving. So... And she does need a bit of power to get the light working. Light is only on the front um, and only works in forward, so not fully directional headlighting as you can call it, but there is a headlight at least. It's also got the, um, like how it's got the auxiliary light up the top, which we probably spoke about later earlier, but... Anyways, let's get it going. 30 minutes in both directions, uh, unlike um, the Shinkansen's, because this is the engine, we will get a few more of its running shots uh, without a load. So, let's get it going.
Alright, there we are. We've finished her running in, finally. Uh, it's an hour later, basically. Um, yes, if anyone's realised, yes, I've got the um, two, uh, Zero Series currently parked on the A platform. I don't know, maybe error, uh, correct error for it, I guess. So, I guess it's time we run it with a load, eh? Um, I'm going to put, behind, uh, put some... Uh, 12, type 12 carriage, 12 class carriages things. Um, basically, the carriages that JR East use with them, so these ones. So, yeah, well, I'm gonna load them on behind it so you will see them just fade into existence. Alright, we've got six carriages for put behind her. Um, the pack comes at seven, but the seventh carriage is more like a crew car. So, um, I guess just move the camera away from the track and let's get it going. Again, you'll see me go over the um, controller because the uh, to the controller because it's in the weirdest place ever. Take it away, T fifty one.
But there we are, another very nice model from um, Cardo. This is their D51 dash, uh, 2016 dash A model, uh, focusing on the preserved D51 by JR East. Definitely a very, very nice model from what we can see. Have to add the number plates because at the moment it looks really weird without any. <laughs> um, Suits very well with these carriages, being the JRE's carriages. Um, yeah. Very nice performance as per uh, per the C62 previously, previously seen. Can't wait to get a few more steam lock motors in the future. Doesn't feel like there's anything really that wrong with the model at this moment because um, uh, except for the humming noises, but that's everything that's ran on the layout, so possibly might be a power issue. But other than that, everything seems to be as per expected from the uh, from Kato's quality. It's unfortunate there's no front couple couplers, um, which seems like there's a very common theme with the tender locomotives, so no double heading of the tender engines. But um, we'll see if the uh, what's it called. Tank locomotives will have that, which I am looking into for the future. In any case, we're going to send her off after this. I hope you guys have enjoyed joining us for this uh, for another engage unboxing video. Hopefully, you'll stick around for more. We'll catch you all next time.